We've been talking almost exclusively in the theory part about Donald McGavran, who is considered to be the father of the church growth movement. And uh, Ralph Winter has played uh, an important role in the church growth, growth movement. And he sort of comes on the scene uh, during the 1970s. The years from 1920 to 1980, those years saw the philosophy of transferring authority from missions organizations and missionaries to the newly established churches and native church leaders in the third world countries. Um, they had established lots of churches over time and they had developed some leadership among some of the native people in these third world areas. So the idea toward the 1980s was we need to reduce these ties. We will just provide funding and we'll let the churches that have been established and the native leadership there take over these churches and all we will do from this point on is provide the funding. And the idea that drove this was uh, the notion that we have done our work, now we must let them do their work. There were a lot of people in the third world uh, among the church leaders and so on who liked this approach. Uh, they were ready in their own thinking for these foreigners to, to leave them uh, but they also welcomed the notion that uh, these people who had sent them would continue to fund the work that was going on to a great extent. And it sounded good. Uh, doesn't that sound like a good plan? It really does. Even ideal. They began to sort of feel like, well, we can pat ourselves on the back and say, job well done. The problem that developed, well, it was already there, it didn't have to develop, but the problem that surfaced, we should say, is that there were many weak and sparse works which existed. They weren't anywhere like able to evangelize peoples in the third world. There were millions of people around them who needed to hear the gospel and they were just not equipped to do it. But once the ball got rolling and the people who had been carrying the burdens of uh, sending the missionaries and funding the missionaries, I think you can imagine that when they pulled the missionaries out, even though they intended to continue to fund the works, it wasn't going to cost nearly as much. The World Council of Churches, uh, in their Commission on World Missions in 1963, declared from now on, mission was each church in its own place proclaiming the gospel. I suspect they had it on a big banner up over their meeting. But do you see... It was a theory. It was based on the theoretical idea or notion that it will be better for us to pull away our missionaries and leave all this in the hands of people who are from these various areas and let them do their job and we'll come back and do our job. This is one of those things that people do when they act like saying something makes it so. They had a real nice sounding slogan, but saying it, and no matter how they said it or how many times they said it, it didn't change the fact that these weak, sparse groups of, of Christians could not begin to do the job that had been left for them to do. So, in 1974, Ralph Winter, the Presbyterian missionary, wrote an article. He said, the central task of mission must always be the multiplication of churches. Now, 
in this paper, he challenged two main presuppositions that were held by the majority of the people that he was affiliated with, the World Council of Churches. Number one, in time he came to openly challenge the popular theme that the church's task of missionary endeavor is done. Winter is challenging this notion because see what they were saying what they were saying was uh, let every church get the gospel out in its own place. In other words, let's just take our stuff and go home and just kind of minister to the people that are around us and that'll be the end of it. Ding dong. Anybody hear the alarm sounding? Ding dong. Is that what you hear out there among our churches? Let's just sort of take care of me, my wife, my son John, his wife, us four, no more. We, we may be critical of what the World Council of Churches did, and I think we should be, but we ought to realize that for a lot of us, that's what we're doing too. We're saying our responsibility to evangelize those people is finished. We've done our part. So here comes Ralph Winter and he says, no, the church's mission is, is not done. He challenges them. He says the central task or mission of the church is the multiplication of churches and that is not finished, he said. That's his first challenge. But the second thing that he challenged was the prevailing notion that the population of each nation was homogeneous. We had a false assumption that all of these, these countries out there in the third world were homogeneous. What we've assumed is that all of the people who live in each of those countries are just alike. He said, that's not true. So he comes back with McGavran's other theory. People like to become Christians without crossing racial, linguistic, or class barriers. And he's saying there are lots of people in these various countries who even though there are a few churches there, there are lots of people who don't, don't belong to any of the tribes or people groups where these churches exist. And so he says they will find it very difficult to evangelize because they will be evangelizing across those lines. His argument was it will be easier to send in cross-cultural missionaries they will be more readily accepted than expecting these natives to do it. You all know that churches divide up along not just racial lines, as we've talked about in here, but economic lines also. There are certain churches in virtually every town where almost all of the people will be very poor. And there are certain churches in almost every town where almost all of the people will be very wealthy. And then there are churches where there is sort of that middle class. And people like to become Christians without crossing those lines. Am I saying that uh, that's the way it should be? Of course I'm not saying that. With God, he is no respecter of persons. God sees everyone the same. But we're not talking about how God sees people. We're talking about how people see people. And so Peter Wagner looks at America and he says, I know good and well that people from this church over here that has all of these wealthy people in it would have trouble evangelizing among the very poor and vice versa. And he's right. It's just a fact of life. We're not saying we're happy about that. Well, that's what Peter Wagner and Ralph Winter and Donald McGavran were arguing.